welcome. I'm Jean Parker, and you're listening to Discovering How, a podcast of the Ethical Business Building the Future organization. We're a global learning community using our workplaces to build a better future. At the entrance on the left side, you have mainly these are the pastries, but then we have also the cakes. And these are all traditional French cakes. On today's program, we we have have been transported to Lopera, a French pastry uh, shop in the middle of New Delhi, India. We'll learn all about how it works. It's called uh, uh, Royal Chocolate, and you have all the other French standards like uh, Tarte uh, tarte au Citron, then we have Fruit Tarts, Paris Brest, etc. So if I talk like that, I will get excited, passionate about all... Oh, you have obviously... All the eclairs. Just promise me. Yes, yes. You will have to then taste the ones that you would. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. I think I, I think I'm interested in that lemon tart. Lemon, yeah. That that's one. This of is a family business, and we'll speak with the rest of the family later. But for now, my name is Kazem Samandari, and uh, the name of the bakery is called L'Opera. Uh, L apostrophe O P E R A. Can Market. This outlet is our flagship store and we it was inaugurated on 30th of March 2011 so this year we will be celebrating in a couple of months uh, the seventh anniversary and it is our most successful outlet it has hundreds and hundreds of guests and customers who come every day here they come for our bread we have I think the largest choice of breads in Delhi. Now, how did you decide what recipes, what pastries to produce? Well, there are some pastries that belong to any any traditional French uh, pastry shop, like éclairs or uh, millefeuille. You need any French pastry that. Oh, by the way, we have just in the display at the entrance of the uh, pastry shop, we have a selection of. 13 different uh, macarons, which are very colorful, which are very, very beautiful. So, How did you know, though, that these would be appealing to the Indian market? Uh, actually, at the beginning... Did you do market testing? Yes, or? exactly, exactly. We, we, in, in the early days, we would create some uh, focus groups. We would invite Indians, expats, we would invite also people who are more traveled, less traveled, and they would then uh, come, taste, and give us their appreciation of the, of, of the different product. And we are, since we are still a relatively small operation, we can make corrections very rapidly. I see. Where are the pastries produced? Uh, we have a production facility which is 12,000 square feet. Uh, we use the basement mainly as a storage facility and we have also our uh, power stabilizer like a sub substation because it, in Delhi you do not have a reliable uh, electricity supply and we have both a water treatment unit it is one of the most modern uh, production facilities in whole India, which allows us uh, to supply the 15 uh, outlets that we currently operate. We're uh, going to open our next outlet in less than 10 days from now. And that's all in 10 years? Actually, 10 years was from the original idea. We then decided to implement this project nine years ago because it took us actually about 14, 15 months to go through uh, the market research and to uh, work on a, 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 on a strategic plan. So when we started L'Opera, we started with the initial phase, which was for three outlets, and then which had to go to 10 outlets. And right now, uh, the strategic plan that we have, for which I mentioned earlier that we were uh, we are in the final phases of a capital increase. It will take us from the current 16, it will take us to 66 outlets uh, within the next five years. Oh my goodness. This is really nice. And, you know, we, we have to love our products, but this is really in the best tradition. 
of the French galettes, buttery, flaky, and also uh, the almond paste which is there, combined with um, crème pâtissière. And uh, this is really delicious, really. <laughs> <laughs> Sampling the goods here yeah. at Lopara. <laughs> What's the difference in the service culture in this bakery as compared with perhaps a pastry shop that you would find in India or maybe a small tea shop or something that you'd find in India? When you come to more accessible, let's say, high street operations like ours, where we are today, then usually this connection between the people who serve and the customers is not as strong as what you would find, for example, in Switzerland or France, where the customer is at the center of the attention of that particular business. So we have a very elaborate um, training program where we explain uh, the importance of the customer that it is not just a, a transactional relationship, but it is about establishing uh, a, a, a relation, about understanding the requirements and the needs of the customers, and serving them in a way that it is just beyond transferring the goods from the counter into a box and give it to the customer. We want to be a relationship based on the trust, respect for the product, respect for the customer, and also a high level of customer uh, relationship. And how difficult was that to get people to understand that value? I wish we could say, use the tense that you said, how difficult it was. I am afraid this is how difficult it is yeah. because this is a daily, daily, daily challenge for us. Because uh, you have, first of all, when you grow, you have always new employees that you have to be trained. But at the same time, it, it is something that you have to repeat and repeat and repeat and until it becomes a second nature. Because what I explained to you is not, it's not necessarily the way things are done and perceived here in India. We're now in the in the vehicle, in the car. We're going from the first location, which is in Khan Market, to another location of La Pura, located in the ambience mall of Vasankunj. And since it's a Sunday, the traffic is not too bad. We are very lucky today. Well, Go. let's talk about the logistics, though, because, you know, we we joke about the traffic in New Delhi and, and uh, Mumbai and so forth, but really, it does create problems for a business like yours, doesn't it, that, that depends on things arriving on time and arriving quickly. Let me uh, explain. As many people may have heard, uh, traffic is one of the big challenges of Delhi and in order to regulate traffic there are quite quite a number of rules and restrictions in this city uh, one of them is that commercial vehicles which are not using CNG uh, which is gas uh, they, they are banned from the roads for most most of the uh, days of the uh, hours of the day so which means first we are you do not see if you look around you never see during the day a refrigerated vehicle that's one the second thing you do not see any delivery vans which is if you go to any large city in the world you will see a significant portion of the traffic are uh, commercial vehicles of a larger size so how do you transport pastries? They have to be, and for now we are in the relatively cool period of the year. During summer, the temperatures go not inside the vehicles, but outside they can reach 48, 49 degrees centigrade, which is very hot, very hot. So we had to solve this problem by transporting all our pastries in uh, specially insulated and cooled units. We call them Sherpas. These are containers uh, which are relatively small in size and we use dry ice uh, inside.
then we put those Sherpas inside those very small vans so then we can transport them. Just imagine that was one of the things we worked on during the 14-15 months. We were preparing uh, the, our business plan and operational and logistics plan. We're now in a very nice, very beautiful tea room, which is very elegantly furnished and quiet, and we're sitting around a table having this conversation. My name is Laurent Samandari. I am the managing director of L'Opera, and uh, uh, I've been in India for the last 10 years right now. So I'm Christine Samandari Hakim. I'm uh, half French, half Iranian origin. Uh, I'm married, I'm a grandmother, I'm a mother first <laughs> of two and grandmother of two. Uh, now we are, I'm uh, involved also with the um, uh, family business. Uh, my part is more maybe the uh, one side is uh, the question of um, of um, the branding and the image of the, commu of the company and some training I do with, uh, with the personnel, the staff on, uh, on uh, courtesy, on how to serve, etc. And uh, another part which is of course related is about the, to help with the core values of the company. Uh, we are a young pr company and uh, we try to develop some values about uh, equality of uh, men and women, about uh, respect of each other, oh. about uh, Quality, uh, qualities, excellence, excellence. and we ha I have also training on that. So this is my part of, of uh, uh, but of course I'm a sort of a supporter of Kazem and, and Laurent. Okay. <laughs> we have a Persian French family. Yes. <laughs> Running a French, a French pastry <laughs> bakery in India. In India. How did this happen? Well, in fact, we came, I will say, because of the love of our grandchild. That's how we start our love story with India. Because my daughter, son-in-law, and grandchildren, grandchild, were in India. They came here some 12 years ago. We were free of, um, uh, we could leave Paris. So uh, we, we had a conference call. My husband, Kazem, was in Japan. Laurent and I, we were in Paris. My daughter, Caroline, was in India, in Delhi. And Kazem said, do you want to go to India? And I said, oh, yes, that will be a dream. So anyway, we all came here. And after a few months, it was, I will say, a dream of Laurent. He said, uh, why not doing something here in India? And then little by little, we had uh, brainstorming with family and more and more the idea comes out, um, bigger and bigger. And then how, that's how we start the, to, to realize, I would say, the dream of Laurent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to ask about the dynamics of a family business. Who can best address that? I can start and then <laughs> Laurent okay. and, and Kazem can. Well, I, I will say the good part of it is that it's really, it brings a, 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 a common project um, in the family, which is, I think, very nice as a, uh, some, a, a very nice feeling, you know, to do something together. I, I'm sure it's a very nice feeling. I hope the children has the same feeling, but for us as parents, <laughs> I think it, it's really something to have a common, to part, have a common to have project, something. to have yeah. something in common mm -hmm. to, to do share. and we share and it's not a question of a business by itself but it, to have something together. Now of course it has also some challenges because then it's the, the relation of uh, yes father and son and mother and sister so it can be also maybe more challenges than if it's totally foreign people because uh, then uh, we don't want also to have uh, that the other one had bad feeling if somebody said something and the other one are, uh, do not agree. So we ha so this is maybe a little bit more the challenges that uh, how to um, to have this equilibrium to have a, a, a something positive, but also because finally it's a business. How did you know you could do this? What were the doubts that you had? The challenges that I've been facing is um, is. Um of uh, the right people, so mm. to find exactly the right type of um, capacities adapted also to the right task. But at the early stage, when you don't have necessarily all the manpower and you don't have all these capacities, at the early stage it could be also an issue. So 
uh, you know, we started this company, we were one, two, and then now we have been reaching 150 employees. So, so now things are slightly different. Still, I think that we have been quite lucky and we have been also able to, to do tremendous things also since the beginning. So I think it's quite, um, it's quite okay. India is known as a place where there's a lot of corruption, right? A lot of deception, a lot of corruption. Things are kind of opaque. How do you deal with that as people who want to do business ethically? We are not. We are not going to take shortcuts. We were not going to pay any um, anything like bribes, etc. We are not going to do anything illegal and anything which is um, unethical. Uh, obviously, it has consequences. Things become longer. When you say longer, it means it is more expensive, more difficult, etc. So that was always the operating principle. There is then, unfortunately, there are cases, what, what do you do when something is right, but you are not getting what is right? That something is due to you, but people uh, are unwilling to give what legally has to be done. For the external, um, how, to, um, how to address this, this, this problem or this challenge externally, as Kazem and Laurent said, that we don't, well, it was uh, rather explicit what Kazem said, this is our philosophy. So now for internal, um, uh, we do some training, of course, and we said everywhere in our, in our, in our communication, etc., that we, we are, uh, this is one of our core value. We, we need people who should be uh, honest, who are um, transparent, etc. So it's something, it's like a late, late motif internally. But of course, we had some some people who don't care about that, and they. But but it's I think it's a it's a long it's a long process. That, but little by little, uh, I I think with, because we are still very um, we, we we believe on, on human on, on the, the the human side of, of people and the, the positive side of people. So, I, I think that if l more and more we repeat, we do training, we said etc. So at least inside of our company. We are creating this atmosphere that this is, we have zero tolerance for, uh, for unethical behavior. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? I think there is one thing which is most rewarding for us, was to be able to create something from nothing. If we go back about 10 years ago, this was just an idea. And today, as Laurent mentioned, we have over 150 employees. We have uh, 15 outlets, and we have plans to take it to over 60. And we have been able, as you know, in India, every person who works, they also support at least seven, eight, nine, ten 10 other people. So this is giving a livelihood to 1,500 people. And there is a lot of satisfaction. Yes, as we mentioned, there were challenges. There are still challenges. And I would tell people, you have to have vision, you have to have dreams. And there are many, many parts of the planet where things have to be done. So. What I want to say is, if we were able to do it, others can do it as well. And there is still so much to be done in this world. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. We hope today's program has inspired you, our listeners, with ideas for discovering how we can all build a prosperous, just, and sustainable civilization. This has been Ethical Business Building the Future, Discovering How. Get more from this podcast by sharing your comments, an article, or a link to something that's important to you. You can contact us on our website, www.ebbf.org. I'm Jean Parker for EBBF, and I thank you for listening. Thank you.